The Terror of Deep Nest, known only as Nosk. This is a downright bizarre fight that feels utterly unlike any other, what with the bizarre shape of the arena, the weird hitboxes, and its genuinely creepy design. But as much as I could say about all that, let's just scurry on over to the attacks. And here's an interesting case. Before this game's major DLC content patches, Nosk only had two attacks, those being the Charge and the Leap. With this game's Hidden Dreams update, he gained the Infectious Outburst, and the Infectious Drip. The charge sounds as basic as many of the charges forward we've already dealt with, but Nosk is by far the tallest monster we've ever seen use this attack, which can definitely make dodging it a little more difficult, complicated even further by these ledges altering his trajectory and raising him upwards. Luckily, it's got a nice big telegraph, and its behavior is quite rigid. He'll always use this attack to dash either to the center of the stage or to the edge of the arena, so plan for both when dodging and he won't take you by surprise. The leap is a bit weird, with how wide his hitbox is. I genuinely can't tell whether or not this attack directly targets the knight. What I can tell is that he never jumps more than half the stage length in a single leap, so if you're far enough away, you don't have to worry about it. Now, as a consequence of both the range limit and this guy's wide legs, this jumping attack is best dodged in the opposite way to what we're used to, by retreating from the longer jumps and dashing underneath the shorter jumps. Now, onto the infectious outburst, this is where things get tricky. The projectile arcs effectively cover the majority of the screen and have a degree of randomness in the dispersal pattern. So, reliable places to avoid all of the blobs are slim pickings, not to mention that they linger as hitboxes on the ground for a moment, even after they land. There are a few patterns you can exploit to make it easier, though. For one thing, he will only ever use this attack immediately after a charge, and he'll only ever use it at center stage. That means that if he's at the arena's edge and uses a charge, you already know that that's the time to start preparing to dodge. If you're wrong and he's charging to the opposite edge of the arena, then at least you don't risk anything. Additionally, he will always follow up this attack with another charge in your direction. I'm going to move on for now, but I'll talk more about how to reliably dodge this attack in the general tips section. For the infectious drip, this one is also stuck to a rigid pattern, in that he'll only ever use this attack immediately after a leap. That doesn't really change much though, as the telegraph is already massive. You have a couple of options for avoiding this one. You can either run as fast and as far as possible to give yourself the biggest possible space to double back through the blob rain, or you can inch along as slow as possible so you never have to double back. Do either of the extremes. Anything in between will just make things needlessly hard on yourself. The main thing with this attack is that it, well, it, it sucks. <laughs> it's not too hard to avoid, but the entire time it's in use, there's nothing you can do to Nosk himself, and it's a long time to not be able to do anything. It's strange, it feels so out of place in this combat system, which otherwise keeps the agency in the player's hands. That's definitely more of a nitpick than a tip, but I gotta call this sort of thing out. Anyway, pseudocritical game design tangent aside, how are we gonna take this creepy crawly down? Basically, the arena is segmented into thirds, and I recommend choosing one of them as your designated territory or the area you'll plant yourself in and only attack Nosk when he comes to you. Which third you pick will determine how best to go about this fight. The reason for all this is, again, he can move around the arena way faster than you can, and trying to chase him down is going to be less productive and overall riskier. No matter which third you're in, whenever he's in your zone and not currently charging, go nuts, and hit him with as much as you can. Everything he can do to threaten you at short range is heavily telegraphed, with the fastest thing he's capable of being the charge, preceded by him both rearing back and shouting, giving you lots of time to pogo off his back and drop back down behind him. When he leaves your zone, you can unload some ranged attacks in his direction. Center stage has the advantage for this part, as you won't have to jump to shoot and you'll always be able to see him to land your attacks. Past all that, just watch out for leaps. Now, for the infectious outburst, to reiterate, he will always start this attack by charging from the edge of the stage to the center. So if he's at the center and he hasn't just finished a charge, you already know that he's not doing this. If, however, he has done his little warm-up charge, there are exactly three safe areas. Two of them are these inside corners. Since the blobs spread outwards, these ledges work as cover from the onslaught. Not always, but definitely more frequently than anywhere else on the ground. So cozy up to the wall and stay safe. This spot will also protect you from the subsequent charge, as he'll run right over your head like a good joke. The third safe spot is directly above Nosk. This one is more reliable, but more difficult to pull off. Here's the strategy. From center stage, when you see him charging towards center, start your double jump well before he reaches you. 
Pogo off him and use another double jump while trying to stay centered with the orange body. And after he bursts, you can get in another Pogo or two. Afterwards, he'll immediately leave the spot below you and you'll have a safe blob free zone to land. So essentially, what this whole fight boils down to is whether you want to play a little riskier and deal more damage faster, or play it slow, safe, and steady and heal off your mistakes. But pretty much anyone who's ever fought this guy can tell you that these corners here are safe from almost everything Nos can do. So, if you don't like the sound of anything I just said, just throw all that away and do it the real man's way. Tuck yourself into one of these corners and get in as many cheap pot shots as you can. The only things you'll have to consistently worry about are charges from your side of the stage and the infectious drip. The ledge over your head will keep you safe from everything else 9 times out of 10, and it's the perfect place to heal if you ever lose those odds. This strategy is definitely slower, but anything is faster than dying. Speaking of which, Nosk, I hope you're ready. Honestly, the best part about this rematch is the fact that we have Abyss Shriek. It is an extremely powerful tool to use whenever we are down below here. Just watch this. Oh, maybe. Uh, never mind. Uh, don't watch that. That was embarrassing. <laughs> okay, okay. Try again. Try again. Yeah. That's going to make the cheesy strategy that we used before go much, much faster. But there's really no excuse not to, or no reason not to use that on at least the attuned difficulty here. Very, very safe. Very simple. Oop. Got hit once, but that all, all around that bodes quite well for our subsequent fights. Here's the issue. Nosk's Ascended and Radiant difficulties get rid of the central little raised platform. This makes this entire fight very difficult to cheese. He is a much, much more uh, presentable threat now. That we do not have a super easy, simple spot to hide from his infectious outburst. You are basically going to have to use the central one. It's not so bad. You do have the option of using a Descending Dark if things look tight. And on top of that, we also have the Shade Cloak. I'll try and use this, show off the best way you can use that here in a second. Yep, right there. You can just dash through them as they're sliding back and forth, or as they are going across the screen. Not too bad. So those are you have some various options, but overall, Quite a bit of a difficulty spike going from the base fight to that one. And now let's see if we can do it without getting hit. Once again, this is the kind of fight where equipping Soul Eater and using as many spells as possible is going to be a, a really good strategy. <laughs> But, as long as you stay centered, stay aware of his patterns that we spoke about at length before, then you shouldn't have too much of a deal, or too much of an issue with this guy. Launch many spells as you can. Be prepared if he ever dashes from the outside, because that's when he's going to use Outburst, unless he dashes all the way to the other side of the arena. Like so. And you should be able to wrap up this fight no problem. I feel like the lack of ledges actually makes this aspect of the fight a little bit easier, avoiding that. Not to mention we have the Shade Cloak, which makes... Whoops! Which makes dodging the, uh, the Infectious Strip a little easier, is what I was going to say. He does have his very funky hitboxes, though. Nicely done. Got hit on the very first, first attack there. Alright, if I don't win this one, I'm, I think I'm going to equip Soul Eater and give myself a better chance here. Not too bad so far, though. It's one of those fights where you kind of just have a rhythm to get into. The extremely... Whoops! That was close. The extremely tall uh, hitboxes on his dash make things a little complicated, but not more so than I think some of the other fi fights that we've gone through. And he's not a very fast jumper. I think his jump would probably be one of his most threatening attacks if it were a little faster, but 
as those jumps go, it is rather slow. But we have just about got him wrapped up. There it is. I feel like Radiant Nosk is one of the ones that took me a long time to learn, just because it's such a shift in, in strategy from, from hiding in the corners to actually facing him head on. But once you get it down, he's really not so bad. Thank you, as always, for watching Boss Blitz. As always, on screen at the top left is a link to my playlist, having my entire playthrough of Hollow Knight. Next up, we're going to fight the only other boss in Deep Nest, Galleon.